Let's give us a state of the state. Where are we right now in the chip crisis? How bad is it? And when does it ease up? I wish I had all those answers, Emily. I think we are at the point where, um, as Ed just pointed out, lead times are long. Um, there's different reasons in different sectors why those lead times are longer than we would like to see. But I think people have orders now um, starting to come in. And so over the last um, second half of last year, I, a lot of long lead time orders were placed by customers in different segments. So inventories are starting to come in. And so from a consumer perspective, you'll start to see um, improvement, even though those lead times are still longer than we want. I think in some sectors, we already are seeing the second half of 22 will begin some easing as capacity comes online. It just really depends on if you're on the leading edge of semis and high performance, or if you're in, in you know, kind of more of the mainstream, um, how, long, how long that's gonna take to work its way through. But the good news is we're growing. What about the potential for supply, uh, you know oversupply, gluts, as Ed mentioned. Do you see that happening? Um, you know, he, Ed is right. It has historically been a, a cyclical business that has had that um, possibility. I think this time is a little bit different than what I've seen in the last couple of decades in this business, where we have multiple growth segments happening at the same time. Ordinarily, we would see um, PCs growing or we would see cloud data center growing we might see automotive or embedded growing. Now we're seeing every segment. So when we see that, we know that what we're seeing is sustained growth, we're seeing expansion. So I am um, less concerned about overcapacity on this cycle than I have been before. Lots of us follow capacity planning. We um, see future starts. We see how much capacity different companies are putting in as they announce their capital expenditures each year. And I don't, I myself have not, concluded I'm not an economist like you have there at Bloomberg but I I don't I don't see that this time I see multi-segment growth demand for multiple nodes not just leading edge but but some of the older nodes and growth in those areas and I think that's an important factor this time around CES is going ahead with in-person plans, despite major companies like Intel, where you work for many years, pulling out. What do you think about that? You know, I think it's it's a personal choice if people want to go. And I know people are, a lot of our industry has been at work from home for a long time, and we're excited about that. Um, I, I myself, you know, and would not advocate it, but it's, I guess it's a personal choice for those that want to attend in person. It's, it's a hard, it, that's a hard decision. Well, even before the pandemic, there was some skepticism about how relevant CES still is. And I'm so curious, given your long history in this industry, does the Consumer Electronics Show still matter when companies can go direct to their audience, go direct to the press so much more easily these days? You know, that's a great question. I think the one thing that the Consumer Electronics Show has done is it's focused um, a bunch of different, you know, what used to be discrete different consumer electronics that are now all connected in some way. I mean, you used to think of the television as very separate from the computer. You don't so much anymore. Um, I think it is an opportunity for everyone to convene at a certain time with new information and to give consumers and and people inside the industry a kind of a vision of how this all comes together does it need to be in person i don't know can it be done direct to consumer absolutely and we saw a lot of those um, press conferences that were virtual today but i do think that the timing of it and having it be an annual thing and the convening of all those announcements is still very helpful to organize the information it is hard to wade through how much comes out once a year about, about all these new appliances. All right, point taken. Now, last quick question. What is the future of Ampere in 2022? What is your role um, in the return of the chip industry going to be? Well, I'm glad you asked. Um, you know, you heard a lot today in all of those CES announcements about a ubiquitous com connected computing and devices and PCs still grow, and um, Qualcomm had a tour de force announcement today. 
get and 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 what we do is we build cloud chips and what we do even more specifically is power efficient power for efficient high performance microprocessors for the cloud and the edge so i'm very encouraged i enjoyed listening to the visions um, from the client side if you will because all of that leads to more demand in the data center um, the the pervasive use of ai in cars and in software across different services and different applications demands even more compute in the cloud. So from our perspective, we're super excited about it. We had a great year in 21. We're looking forward to 22. We have more new things coming out. So it's going to be an exciting year for us.